Uh, welcome to the Long Shot. It's a podcast, and Hi. Amber Kenny is your host, and I am also your host. My name is Sean Conroy. Uh, just a quick thing to start with, Amber. I heard from a friend of mine today who has <laughs> has uh, uh, two twin sons who are both. I don't know if they're tweens or early teens, like young, younger. So they skew young. They're in the younger demographic. And uh, he was on a long car trip with them recently and said, "We, I have an audio book and I have a podcast and we can, you know, and they said, let's listen to the podcast. And oh, it no. was the, yeah, it was the <laughs> one where I read about the guy walking around the locker room with his <laughs> erection. And so he, he let me know that his kids were like, eh, like they didn't want to listen to it anymore <laughs> and so so they were like put the audiobook on it the audiobook was the that rise, book no, no, the, <laughs> was was the rise and fall of the third reich so no in a, in a in a comparison between two things the rise and fall of the third reich was the lesser of two evils compared to this podcast at least it falls you know <laughs> like <laughs> That's right. it's not it's not called Hooray Third Reich. It's right. like, you know, it goes up, it goes down. Mm-hmm. Uh, maybe it's coming back. We don't know. We don't know. Um, at at work, sometimes we will, like, share what we call un- user-generated content, you know, like fan mm-hmm. art. And we have to do, like, a... Share, you know, like, like, on your social media or mm-hmm. amongst each other? On our social media, right, right. you know, like check out this cool fan art from Indianapolis or whatever. Yeah. And we have to do, we, I mean, we don't have time to do like a thorough background check, but we do have to do like a quick, like, of course, are we sharing a Nazi's <laughs> art? <laughs> like, and we, yeah. literally, that's the phrase It's like, we, ha- and it's crazy that we have to check, but we do have to check. Well, I don't know if you remember this, but just within the last couple of years, maybe like four or five years ago now. Uh, there was a sketch comedy group that got a show on Adult Swim and was making the show and was putting little Nazi messages into the show. And the Adult Swim people didn't realize it until, I can't even remember if any of it aired or they found out just before it was about to start airing or what the whole upshot of it was but yeah it was basically they were like we got this show now we're going to get to do whatever we want so heil hitler you know um and by the way i'm saying that because we have a podcast and we're allowed to do whatever we want so heil hitler so you know i was in i mean this was years ago now but Mm -hmm. i was in that play remember that joe directed too many hitlers Hitlers. Yeah, yeah and 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 i'm tagged in too many photos from that play (laughs) you're in too many too many Hitler photos. <laughs> yes. Yeah. But like even that, and it's so clearly a play, like we're mm-hmm. on a stage and there's stage lights. Even that, the fact that those photos are floating around in the internet makes me uncomfortable. Of course. Of course. I mean, this is, this, I just talked about this a few weeks ago that one of our listeners was aggressively asking me about a comedian who was at the January 6th riots. And somehow I got tagged in another post that was about fast. Who I don't even remember, but it was like right. I don't want any part of this. Yeah, you know? I don't want my like, name associated. So now when I when I go for my next corporate job, they're going to do a bit of a deep dive, and uh, they're going to find out that I am not who I say I am. Uh, but I mean, all kidding aside, like of course the Third Reich is not coming, but some Reich may be coming. I, I actually spoke with a friend of mine today, who. <laughs> said and again i don't know why i'm laughing about this because it's really not funny to keep from crying i guess uh but they were like (laughs) whatever this person is first of all let me just say this person is a foreigner so i do not approve of them wait (laughs) being in this country they live here they're naturalized (laughs) where did this go (laughs) (laughs) but they were like they were like, I'm on the dating apps in Europe because 
I, I am thinking about trying to marry someone in Europe because I am afraid that this country is turning fascist and I want to have an escape plan. I want a passport from a European country so I can leave this country when Trump gets elected again in 2024. And I was like, I don't have an escape plan. I don't know how to get out of here. <laughs> get on those apps. I should. Uh, I'm sure there's a lovely Luxembourgian woman who would love to have an American husband, right? Absolutely. Um, and yeah, yeah, it is funny because like there's those 90 day fiance shows that are all about mm -hmm. people trying to get a green card for the right. United States. But it does feel like. The reverse is happening quite a bit as well. Yeah. Yeah. I couldn't say I blamed this person. I was like, mm -hmm. I get it. You know, my parents are very smug about not living in the United States. Mm -hmm. I will say they're very like, Oof, I wouldn't want to live there. That place seems crazy. Oh, sorry. <laughs> I have to get off the phone. The cartel is here. <laughs> um, but yeah, I, I guess I could always chill with them if I could get across the border. Right. Right. If you can somehow managed to swim across the Rio Grande <laughs> with you, you could find a coyote to bring it. Mm -hmm. you know, There's the, plenty in this neighborhood. We talked about what, it. <laughs> oh, that's right. I just sent you a photo. <laughs> yeah. I was out walking the other night I and mean, we had just talked about it. And then I was out walking the other night and a coyote sprinted past me like four feet away. It scared the shit out of me because it was dark out and I didn't really right. see it coming. And then all of a sudden it was right next to me. And, uh, <laughs> I don't know. I don't know if you could see it in the photo because it was so far away by the time I got my phone out and took a picture. But uh, but at least it didn't stop. It was it was putting up signs uh, as it was going that said like this way to cheap right. roadrunner food. Right, right, right. Um, but it got pretty far away. And then like by a, the like time a, I left, it was painting a, it a was, tunnel. Well, no, no, no. That would be the roadrunner was doing that. Oh, but, right. Yeah. Damn it. Damn it was over by, by, by the time I left. <laughs> no, no, no. I, I was about to say this. That is what I was going to say. And then I realized halfway through. No, no, no. It was opening a box that said uh -huh. Acme Bomb Company. And then in the distance, as I rounded the corner, I heard an explosion. Well, and it did step off a cliff. And Without it, falling for a while. It noticed first before it fell. Bleep, 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 bleep. Yeah. Oh, no. <laughs> right. <laughs> Uh, so I want to introduce a new segment at the top of the show. Oh, tonight. good. And this we'll is, see if this, this is news to me. P.S. We didn't do any. No, no, no. We didn't. We pre-production. This this week for once we didn't have a pre-production. No, normally either. we have hours and hours address. I just rehearsal. couldn't. I didn't have time. I didn't <laughs> yeah. have time this week. Uh, but I, who knows if you know? This may be a segment that only lasts once. It may be a segment we do from starting tonight until the end of time. We just don't know. That's the nature of these things. But this segment is called "I Read a Tweet About Trump That I Wrote," and eventually it connects back to Amber. That's the name of the segment. Okay. <laughs> um, not in a bad way. Don't worry. <laughs> <laughs> yes. Ultimately, it turns out that Amber supported him in the last election. Uh, no, here's the tweet that I wrote. I sent this tweet out this morning. This is what it says. And by the way, please follow me on Twitter at Sean Cutler. My writing process is like Trump's presidency. Three years, 10 months of TV, golf and fucking people over. Then two months of sleeplessly working my ass to the bone. Without a deadline, nothing gets done. Also, I'm making it up as I go along and violence. So basically, I'm just analogizing the idea that Trump did nothing for so long. And then at the very last, I mean, he worked harder in those last two months of his presidency than probably any president in history. Right. Like just nonstop trying to figure out how to, you know, overturn the election, steal the voting machines, change the vote count, convince the state, you know, all the things he did. That's <laughs> it's so funny to me because, you know, we spent four years being traumatized by his daily press conferences and the crazy shit that was going on. 
And now I'm like, oh, thank God, it's Joe Biden. I can take a breath. And every day now there are just revelation after revelation after revelation of all the crazy criminal shit we suspected he was doing but didn't know. And now we're starting to know. But anyway, so I sent that tweet out. Somebody responded to the tweet and said, hey, Sean. This is I shouldn't say somebody responded. This was actually from Donald Trump. No, I'm kidding. Hey, Sean. (laughs) You were one of my favorite improv teachers at UCB about 22 years ago. Wow. And I still use those lessons in my work way more than anything I learned in college. Wow. Yes. So. What did they do for work? (laughs) That's what I I wrote back. I was like, I hope you're like a rodeo clown and not like a paramedic or something. (laughs) Yeah. Um. Uh, but, but anyway, so that was just a very, like things like that are incredibly gratifying to hear. Teaching is an interesting job in that way, because you work with people, students, they're people, but they're students. You work with them and try to impart whatever lessons you have to them, but you have no idea what is going forward what yeah is. like you just don't know you have just have no idea and so to get that from somebody is like oh that was nice in fact i was i, was, I don't know if i where i saw this on the internet or something but there's this new show called abbott elementary school it's a sitcom that's on i haven't seen it but i've television somewhere yeah. <laughs> yeah it's um, streaming probably yeah. uh And it turns out it's called Abbott Elementary School because the creator of the show named the school after her sixth grade teacher. Wow. Mrs. Abbott. And the clip that I saw was from Jimmy Kimmel Live where she talked about how she hadn't seen her teacher since sixth grade, but they talked on the phone when the teacher found out that the school was named after her or whatever. And Jimmy Kimmel had the teacher live there. So it was like a very like, Oh my Feel God, Miss Abbott. Yeah. yeah, yeah. And uh it was very sweet. And and so so it, it is that weird thing of you have this incredibly close relationship with people for a short period of time, then they live the rest of their lives and you have no idea what goes on after that. Right. And this ties into <laughs> about I don't know. A week ago, I got an email from somebody, a reporter, who said, this person, who is a former student of yours. Not the same person from the tweet. No. Just totally, want to clarify that. Totally for... different person. Yes. Yeah. Not the rodeo clown. Uh, this person, I, I work for this, <laughs> I think. I think in the email it said newspaper, which was hilarious to me because I was like, is there really such a thing anymore? But it turns out this is actually a weekly alternative paper. So they do put out a print edition every week. Uh, But this reporter said, I work for this newspaper. We're doing a profile of this person who has just moved to town and is trying to get a comedy scene going here. And this person talked a lot about what an influence you were on them in their comedy career and so can i interview you about this person and you're like no idea who they are no no no. i definitely know i definitely know who it is like i and i and i so anyway yeah well this is yeah you already know where this is going like that they uh it was somebody who i i have in a sense kept in touch with over the years but by that i mean in the way that you keep in touch with people over social media, basically like you see you, what they decide to post and you like each other's posts. And then you like once in a while DM each other, whatever, whatever, but it's never, it's not like we were like having coffee on a regular yeah. basis or whatever, but, but that's great. I mean, that's very, again, very gratifying that this person specifically said enough that this reporter was like, can I interview you? And I was like, okay, Yeah, absolutely. I'm happy to talk about this person and, you know, what I know about them. 
And I couldn't remember how long ago I had had this student in class. I was like, it was a long time ago. And during the course of the interview, the reporter was like, do you remember going to Trader Vic's after the WGA awards? And I was like, yes, I do. Because that's the only award ceremony I've ever been to. So I definitely remember getting all dressed up that night and going out and, you know, it was a big deal. Uh, that was when I was working on key and peel that would have been in 2012 or 2013. So this person would have been in my class prior to that. So at least 10 years ago or more, this person was a student of mine. And I did remember, I didn't remember until he brought that up. Uh, but anyway, so we went to Trader Vicks, whatever. This person was working at Trader Vicks. I ran into them there. That was nice because, and I tried to explain this. This is such a weird, hard thing to explain for me. But tell me if you understand what I'm trying to get at here. I teach, this person took the same class ultimately, and this is not how this ties back to you. This person took the same class that you did with me, which was a sketch writing class. Right. So I was trying to explain that to run into someone like that. And I was with like a bunch of writers from Conan and, and Bill Maher and Key and Peele and a bunch of people from SNL, some of the actors from SNL, whatever, whatever. Name drop, name drop, name. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Not but, like project drops, project like there's no names right. involved. Conan, all those people, Conan, the other person, Saturday Night Live. Uh, but my point was in that class, the student is trusting that the teacher knows what they're talking about, or they're not trusting that. They're going, this is someone who's saying, I know how to write this type of comedy you need to listen to what I'm saying. I have valuable insight that you can learn from me. Right. But, you know, there's that whole thing about those who can't do teach, blah, 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 which right, I don't, right, right. I actually don't believe that. I don't think well, that's I, true. It, there's no way. <laughs> it would be crazy if you believe that and then continue right. teaching. Right. But, um, there, uh, yeah, but, and, and it, it's not like you have a doctorate. You're right. not an... You, you just have everyone has to have faith that you know what you're talking about. That there's your no, experience has brought you here. And that there's you, no like right. you're not knighted into sketch comedy writing <laughs> no, or whatever. No. Like, <laughs> uh, although I'm sure there are degrees now in that somewhere. Some fucking, you know, expensive East Coast liberal arts school is giving master's degrees in sketch comedy somewhere. But you're saying, I know what I'm talking about. And, and, and as we know, we live in a world where there are lots of people who say, mm -hmm. listen to me. I know what I'm talking about. Vaccines do not work. And Don't people <laughs> listen to them because they I just worry about things getting out of context. But it's something I don't believe. <laughs> <laughs> but, but so anyway, so to be in that situation and to know that this person had put their trust in me when they had no actual validation right. of that. And then you walked in with the validation, basically. To me, it was like, and I don't, this is where I don't know how to articulate it, but it's like, it made me feel good that this person was right for putting their trust in me in that mm -hmm. moment. Do you know? Right. Um. So anyway, that was that was one of the things that came up in this interview. And by the way, this interview with this reporter was for 45 minutes on the phone. So uh, but, you know, you know, you're going to have question, one sentence in the article. Well, you know of that. course, of course. <laughs> but but well, that's what I said. I go at the end of the whole thing. I go, if you end up using anything I said, I may bug you for an actual physical hard copy of the newspaper. But you know the one question that I knew was going to be asked during the interview. I know it. Yes. <laughs> like, this is a student who took my sketch writing uh -huh. class who is grateful to me for this or whatever, uh -huh. who I have kept in touch with. 
whatever. So what question is the reporter definitely going to ask? Well, like, did this student stand out from other students? Not even that general. Like, what sketch do you remember that they wrote? That oh, God. I don't even remember the sketches I wrote. Like, so, forget that forever. So they brought that up. This reporter brought that up and said, do you remember a particular thing or, I you know, know some funny thing? laptop. <laughs> <laughs> well, no, no, no. I said, I said, you know, I, I really don't like I teach so much and I've been doing it for so long and everything just like, I don't remember my own sketches sure, from that long this ago, is what I'm saying. Like, much I, less anybody else's. You I know? recently was going through like old files and uh-huh. reading sketches that I had written not right. that long ago, like, Four Hot years dog ago, volcano. Three. And um, I was like, hey, don't, don't like, don't remember this at all. It's mm-hmm. like not even sparking a hint of a memory. Mm-hmm. And I like giggled at them. And I was like, yeah. oh, go me. But that's, that's one thing I always like about <laughs> going back and looking at old stuff is I have such a sense of like, why am I not better at this? And then I go back and look at something old and I'm like, this is fucking good. Like, this is actually <laughs> really good. Uh, but anyway, uh, so he he brings that up and I'm like, I really, I honestly, I don't. 15 minutes later, same question. So I know I said this already, but just, I'm really curious, like, just think about like when you were in class, is there a specific thing yeah, like- that stands out? And I go, <laughs> I go, look, I could lie to you and say yes, but I don't want to do that. And I'm I'm not, you know. I just, I, there's nothing that's coming to mind and that's not a bad thing because right. that's true of everybody. Like, that's just how this, I perform and write and teach and improvise and do so many things for 25 years. Right. It's very difficult. Well, and I feel like sketch even more than anything else, because it's not like you were working on a novel with it. Like the, the nature of sketch is kind of like this quick thing. Mm -hmm. And then it's the next thing. Yeah. Yeah. That was actually one of the things we talked about was I said, you know, it was like, I teach sitcom writing now back then I was teaching sketch and he was like, can you tell me what the difference between those two things is? And I was like, I can, but it's going to be really boring for me to explain (laughs) that. Uh, but anyway, uh, then he was like, what <laughs> he goes, and I get it. I get it. He's looking for something, you know, he goes, what, are there any famous people, you know, that have taken your classes over the years that are now famous and yes, blah, blah, blah. actually numerous. Yes. Yeah. And I was like, Yes, but I'm I not going to tell class you with people who are now famous. <laughs> I was like, I'm not going to tell you any of their names because that right. makes it sound like I'm trying to take credit for what yeah. these people have accomplished, which is absurd. You know, right. I mean, it, that said, it was mostly my responsibility <laughs> sure. that these people all became famous. But anyway, so I said, no, I'm not going to give you any names. I'm sorry. I'm not, you know, whatever. It's like they did their thing and it's worked out for them. And then there's lots of people who were just as talented as they are, who have never become famous because that's the nature of this business is you have no control over opportunity. You only have control over your own abilities and how hard you work on them. Then third time. No. So come on. There, there has to be, I mean, Do you have something, I mean, and this is where it does tie back to you. He goes, do you, do you, you don't have like some sketches over the years that you like put up on your refrigerator or whatever. They asked that. (laughs) Yes. And I said, I will tell you, I have one sketch on my refrigerator was written by a student of mine even before I had this person in my class and the person who wrote the sketch that is up on my refrigerator has been my podcasting partner for 13 years. <laughs> so which, that's, that's why. insane, which is insane, <laughs> but it was up on that refrigerator well before the podcast. Oh, I'm sure. Yeah. I mean, I don't remember specifically, but I'm sure you're right. Uh, <laughs> right. Yeah. So it's been up there almost since I moved into this apartment, like almost that's 15 crazy. years. Yeah. So anyway, I just thought that was funny. So anyway, that's that's a segment that we like to call a tweet I tweeted this wow. morning that ties back to Am- a Trump tweet I tweeted this morning that ties back into Amber somehow. Wow. Okay. Um, and, okay and honestly, I, I, it didn't I, even I, I need, liked it. 
I was scared that it was like. <laughs> it didn't even need the tweet part. It was just a right. weird coincidence that that tweet led to somebody saying, I was a student of yours 22 years ago. And it connected to literally the interview was yesterday about uh, teaching and all this stuff. And right. so, and here's the last thing I'll say about it. Probably not. But um, after the interview, because I had said, because uh, towards the Did end. Did you immediately be like, oh, that's good. <laughs> <laughs> as soon as you got off the phone, you're like. Hey, I am so sorry. Yeah. Or whatever. <laughs> like, Just a piece of advice as a reporter, always ask four times because mm -hmm. that's the magic number. Um, no, I, the, the, the. The story about Trader Vix, like I had, because he, he, he brought up, he was like, do you remember this night? Because, and of course, you know, this person was like a young UCB student at the time and got to, was working, but also got to like hang out and talk to a couple of the people who were cast members on SNL at the time. And I introduced them and, you know, blah, 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 blah. And he was like, you know, do you remember that night? And I said, yeah. And I was trying to articulate what I was trying to articulate to you before. Didn't feel like I had accomplished that. So of course I sent him like a 10,000 word email after the interview saying, well, let me just try to re-explain this point. <laughs> uh, so it'll be interesting to see, like, you know, as we said before, it'll be like one line in the whole, in the whole piece, but you know, We'll see. So we like to start the show with a segment that we call uh, parting shots. <laughs> no. <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Checking in. Let's check in today with Amber. Amber. Yeah, I have. Well, I guess I could save one for parting shots. Um, we've we're doing better, but we've been like under the weather as a family and not hmm. sick. Um, a aren't we all aren't we all under the weather all the time? Yes. Yes. No, I mean literally, like that is the nature of weather. The weather it's is above us. Above yeah. us. Um Thank what you. Was I? Oh, so a couple weeks ago, Jeff fell off his bike. Mm. And um I can never, I'm going to sound like a horrible, horrible person and wife, but you can never tell if it's like, is it bad or are you being a baby? Like what's happening here? Um, but I think it's pretty bad. I think he bruised his ribs is what we're deducing because it's still very painful for him. And mm -hmm. it was like hard for him to even like walk and take smudgy out for a long time. Um and he's going to an official doctor's appointment tomorrow. But what was he doing when this happened? Was he like he was riding a bicycle and he No, I know he fell off his bike, but like was he standing on it? Was he I mean how no, do you fall was, off a bicycle? I mean the whole thing about bikes is they're supposed to be easy. It's like riding a bike, right? Like that's the expression. So uh <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I I don't know. I wasn't there, but um, I think he was in Hollywood, and it was like the an uneven sidewalk. Or Hollywood is awful. It is and, awful. And he um, it for lack of a better word, it sort of like tripped him, and yeah. so he he flew off and and landed on the ground. I have never ridden a bicycle around hollywood because yeah. it seems very scary to me well there was a guy who eddie and i were friends with eddie was closer to him than i was but he was an actor in new york and he moved out here uh to be a well to be an actor he already was an actor he moved out here to he, see he was an actor in new york and he moved out here to be an actor in los angeles correct and very athletic guy, very, you know, and big bike rider. And he was riding his bike around out here not long after he moved. And he kind of did what, what Jeff did. He hit something like a pothole or something and fell and shattered his jaw. And his jaw was wired shut for like a year. Like uh, it was crazy. So uh, yeah, it is. I, I sympathize. It's dangerous. It's, yeah. it's, 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 you know, difficult. Build well, back better. Yeah. 
And it was tough. Again, last week was worse than this week. Mm-hmm. I think um, like psychologically, we've done some research and bruised ribs just take a really long time to heal. But mm-hmm. before we knew that, it was like, I think he was he was really freaking out about like, is this something crazy serious or like, right. is it something else? He took a bunch of COVID tests, like, cause he was just tired and fatigued and in mm-hmm. pain and couldn't walk. Um, and it put him in a bad mood as you might imagine. And then, um, last Friday. So all of that is happening last Friday. I took smudgy for a mid morning walk and I came back and I, I wish I could tell the story better. You, you know, when like, things that's how happen, I always feel. I wish you could tell every story. I, I'm not a good storyteller. I understand. You should <laughs> no. stop podcasting with me after a, a it's decade. Too late. It's too late. <laughs> yeah. Inertia has taken over. Yeah. But, um, like smudgy wouldn't come inside or so I, I, I truly don't even remember exactly what it was, but for some reason I was down low and I came up suddenly and we have, um, right in our like laundry room, uh, the, the power box and it like the corner of it hit my head so hard that I like fell to my knees and Mm -hmm. I was in tears. Like it was like cartoonish bump on my head and stuff. Mm -hmm. So last Friday, I mean, smudgy and smudgy's always (laughs) not feeling great. (laughs) His whole thing is smudgy has a lot going on. Yes. He doesn't like things. Mm -hmm. (laughs) So we got smudgy being smudgy. We've got Jeff who's like in pain and grumpy and horrible. And I'm like, I think I have a concussion, but I don't know. Like just wake me up every 20 minutes, please. (laughs) And so it was just like, we were, we were walking wounded. Yeah, it was it was not a great Friday night. I mm-hmm. will say that. And um I'm a big fan of drag race. I think I've mentioned it before and that comes on on Fridays and it's like we eat pizza on Fridays. We have pizza Fridays, so we eat pizza and I watch drag race. Like those are the constants and I love the simplicity of a drag race, you know? It's like two cars, whoever comes out the fastest is going to oh, win. Oh, oh, it's not like that. <laughs> I don't understand. <laughs> um, oh, I'm so sorry. My computer now shows me my text messages and I hate it. I'm like, go, everyone stop. <laughs> um, I yeah, know it I happens to me all off. the time when I'm having, when I'm having meetings, it doesn't show up. It doesn't show up on my computer, but I'll have my iPad open to be looking oh. at, at whatever and documents we're working on or whatever. And it's like, bling, bling, bling. I'm like, fuck what the hell. <laughs> Um, so Jesus, that's why I keep, mom, I, keep, I don't care. You that's know? why I keep like not finishing thoughts and I'm so right. sorry, but, um, oh, so I, I watched my favorite show, RuPaul's Drag Race. It's about mm-hmm. drag queens. It's not about racing. Where do you get the pizza from? That place that you guys used to have the show at? We ordered pizza. Cause I was like, I mean, so we typically do just like a frozen pizza. Ah. We're not too good. For that, but, not, not um, either. But believe me, <laughs> believe me. But but I was like, I need something special tonight, and so he, <laughs> he ordered from a nice Italian restaurant, and it was uh-huh. very good. Um, <clears throat> so we were eating the good pizza. I was eating. I was watching Drag Race, and he- I like how both of us feel like we have to apologize for being okay with eating frozen pizzas. <laughs> <laughs> like, like that makes us bad people. Um. So yeah, so I was watching my show. He took Smudgy out, but he was in so much pain that it where your ribs are, like if Smudgy pulls at all, it's incredibly painful. So he's not, it's not, he's not doing a lot of Smudgy walking these days. But so he went to take him out while I was watching my show. And he came back like incredibly frustrated. And he was like, can you come with us? I know he has to poop and he's not pooping. And like, he was like beside himself. And I was like, sure. And I paused my show and I went out with them and everything was fine. I was, I had a pounding headache <laughs> and a lump on my head, but Concussion. everything was fine. Yeah, yeah. Everything was fine. And then we came back and I was like, I'll keep watching my show. It wouldn't start. <laughs> I tried so many times. Your, and I was TVs, like, your TVs are cursed to that house. <laughs> um, 
And Jeff was in the back with Smudgy. And I finally was like, come out, both of you, and let's watch something else. Because, like, I, it's more frustrating to And it was like, it, it was only like a quarter second into the race. So you <laughs> couldn't tell who had taken right, the lead right. at that point. Right. Uh-huh. Um, so, yeah, we were, a, we were a bunch of grumps. And we're doing better now. Good. But, um, but, yeah, it's it's. I think it's hitting me <laughs> two years in. It's hitting me that this pandemic stuff is no good. <laughs> but um, That's but where like, I was last week. Yeah. But like, even um, I am incredibly fortunate and privileged and I'm aware of that to even all caveats aside. Yes. To keep even going. like have a husband and to have a family and all I don't of that. have a husband. Yeah. I know. And I'm bragging, but, mm-hmm. but like, I realized that we used to go on dates mm-hmm. like every week. Right. And I was kind of, um, I want to say smug, but smug's not the right word, but I'll say smug because why not of like, like you want to know how to make a relationship work? Keep go going on dates. on dates. Yeah. Go on, you know? And, um, we haven't in two years mm-hmm. <laughs> and it's not great. Like it, it's not like we still like each other, but we're just hanging out being in the same. This is like being in fucking. It's not the same thing. I was about to say, this is like being in jail. It's not at all like that, but being in the same space. Mm-hmm. I mean, I've said this before. If I, I, had had a roommate during this whole thing, oh, which is obviously a different relationship. You would have killed them. Or they would have killed me. Like mm-hmm. it's just not, we're not meant to do that, you know? Right. We're supposed to go hunt and gather and <laughs> then we get back together, you know? Right. right. Well, go and, um, drive a mastodon off the cliff and come home in a few hours and don't come home without a mastodon, you know? <laughs> I well, and I will say it's a strange dichotomy, but I think you're going to know what I'm talking about where I, we are never apart, like maybe an hour. If I like go for a hike or, you know, Mm -hmm. like we're never apart, but I miss him because it's not, it's quantity time, but it's not necessarily quality time. Yeah. Yeah. I mean, you're right that that is a strange dichotomy, but it totally makes sense because it's not a choice you're making. It right. is a la- a total lack of choice. Right. And and I am very aware and this week in particular of like, oh, maybe I need to, you know, <laughs> Because we're in lockdown. So on the weekends, like, I'm just like scudsy mcscudsy, you know, like in my... I don't know what that means. Is that a reference to the missile system? No, I mean, like, I'll wake up in PJs, change into workout clothes, work out, shower, and change into different PJs. Like, I'm I'm never... Can I just say... (laughs) You're like three steps ahead of me because <laughs> you're changing into workout clothes and changing into di- different PJ. <laughs> like that's beyond my Ooh, powers of comp- Tony. beyond my powers of comprehension. But what I mean is like, oh, I'm not like not at your best self. Well, yeah, I'm not not to sound like a 1950s women's magazine, but like I'm not presenting. I'm not. There, we don't. It, <laughs> I'm not communicating well, but I'm not. Like, I think you are. Your 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 mouth isn't saying a lot, but your intent is coming across <laughs> loud and clear. But like, there, I'm not putting effort in to yeah. my appearance, and not that that's what the whole relationship should be, but it's some of it. You know what I'm saying? Well, and this is a this is a fucking well. Who knows? I was about to say this is a fucking interesting thing, but maybe it's not. Maybe it's really boring. And if it is, we'll hear the clicks of people turning this (laughs) off. But I think that kind of relates to 
what the point I was trying to make about going to Trader Vix and seeing this student where it's not like you think that this other person is only attracted to you because of how you look and that you think you have to look a certain way because they're attracted to you, but you want to look a certain way right. to be attractive to them. I don't want to give up. Good- <laughs> right. But, but, but because it's like, it's, it's, you're thinking about the other person, not like, again, I'm not articulating it right, but it's like, it's not a selfish thing and it's not, right. it's also not, I think it's not the patriarchy. It's just like, I want to do this, but we're in this weird fucking situation right. where that's not a thing. Right. Well, and I think we may have talked about this before, but it feels that should almost, be the new name of our show, by the way. <laughs> we probably talked about this. Before. I think we've talked about this. I think we may have talked about this before. But um, it's almost equal. Like, okay, not getting ready at all. Like, just being in sweats and being greasy feels almost equally as crazy as getting completely ready. Like, wearing full outfit hair, makeup, and then just sitting at home. Like, Mm -hmm. and I know that there, there's a happy medium, but Mm -hmm. it also feels crazy to spend a lot of time getting ready and just sitting on the couch and watching TV. Like that, either way, it feels like you're insane. Can I make a suggestion? Sure. Third pajamas. Oh, well, like I'm wearing earrings right now and Mm -hmm. I, was going to say this last episode. It made me laugh because I put them on for the episode and then put them <laughs> the headphones and you can't see them. <laughs> but like, I'm trying to do a little thing. Like I'll wear one piece of jewelry. I will comb my hair. Like I'm trying to not just slip into, I'm a complete right. crazy person. And I also think there's something to, I'm wearing this thing, but nobody can see it, but it, changes the way I feel. I mean, that's how I am with butt plugs. Like I'll just walk around, you know? Yeah. (laughs) (laughs) Nobody sees it, but But I know it's there. Yeah. 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 (laughs) Earrings are basically the same thing as butt plugs. So (laughs) it doesn't matter if anybody sees them or not, as long as you feel different. Uh, yeah, I get it. It's hard. It's a fucking hard time. Mm -hmm. All caveats aside, we are privileged. We are on, we, you know, we have so many advantages than so many advantages over other people. And we're very lucky and that's all true, but that doesn't mean this isn't incredibly difficult. Well, and at the end of next month, the end of March, Jeff will, Jeff and I will have been married three years, Mm -hmm. which is great, but it feels like 30 and yeah. that's not a romantic sentiment, but we've been in lockdown together. Like right. it, it, this doesn't feel like a new marriage. <laughs> right. Well, I mean, think about when you marry someone in a normal world, you right. are not with them all day, every day, all night, every night, every day, every week for a year, for two years. Well, And if anything, um, I, before the pandemic, I was self-conscious about how often, because we we lived very separate lives, but that's mm-hmm. why we were so happy to go on dates multiple times a week to right. spend time together and catch up. But like, I would have, you know, liquid feet rehearsal. He would have his different shows. He would, you know, like we, we, we weren't attached at the hip. We, right. we had lived very independent lives and um, we don't any longer. Right. And I do... All of this said, I do think if and when the world ever opens up again, it is, I'm going to have a, I'm like codependent with him. Like mm-hmm. it's going to be tough to separate. Oh, the psychological that. effects of yeah. this are going to be overwhelming for <laughs> years, possibly the rest of our lives. Yeah. You know? We're going to be pretty fucked up. It's going to be cool. Yeah. We're going to be um, really weird old people. <laughs> God damn it. I was already headed for yeah. shit, you know, and now it's going to be even worse. Oh, yeah. No, I get it. I get it. Well, what else? What else is going on in your... I have to say more? <laughs> no, you don't have to. You can say, 
you could say now I'm checking out. You, that, you're allowed to make a check and out. You could I'm say checking out. I feel check, like we 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 dove mate. into a lot of good things. Mm-hmm. No, absolutely. Um. All right. Well, why don't we why don't we take a break and then do our parting shots? Sounds good. All right. All right. Bye, Aaron. We are back. You are listening to the long shot, not the long <laughs> shot about basketball, although sometimes we do talk about basketball on this show, but it's not exclusively about basketball. Sometimes it's about the rise and fall of the third right. <laughs> oh, no. <laughs> it's a choice between those two subjects. Uh, but we always like to finish the show with something we call parting shots. So I leave it up to you. Would you like to go first or second? I'm giving you, first. it's I'll like you first. won the co- coin toss. So you can elect to kick or to receive. So you're going to kick. Mm-hmm. Um. So I'll take this direction. On, uh, on Sunday, I woke up early and Smudgy and I went for a walk. Shocking. I know. And it was, um, <laughs> well, I know Jeff wasn't going to do it. God damn it. <laughs> it was very, okay. I'm, I'm getting self-conscious even finishing the sentence, but I was going to say it's, it was very cold out for anyone outside of like California. Probably not, but it, your, your parameters shift. I get it. Like, <laughs> like it's fucking 61 degrees no, it out was there. In the 40s. It was in oh, the forties. It was in the forties. Okay. It wasn't, the, but I mean, it wasn't like below zero. No. It wasn't well, a wind chill factor. Like Arctic here. Yeah, no, it was. So, and I mean, Smudgy is a small dog with short hair. So he was shivering just as is. Yeah. And, um, and I just felt ambitious. Sundays are the best day for us to go for a walk because it feels like everyone else sleeps in. So we're able to kind of go more places without running into other dogs and right. drama and all of that. So um, I was like, <laughs> <"Let's go." laughs> yeah. So we went for a long, long walk, and uh, it was great. We went all the way to like Angelino Heights, which no one knows what that means, but we were up. It, it was great. It was really fun. And then on the way back, we passed. Echo Park Lake. And um, I don't know if you've been there since that crazy occupation. The homeless encampment? Yeah. yeah. No. Um, well, it's all fenced in, out, around. <laughs> it's all fenced on. <laughs> yeah. Um, it's fenced about. <laughs> mm-hmm. And there's only certain entrances. And, th- and that's notable because before it was a park. And if you happened upon it you were there no matter it was just wide open yeah it's a no matter park what, yeah right um and and here like you have to find the opening mm-hmm. you get it um that's what well no it's <laughs> my favorite i hope everybody understands i was doing that ironically because that's my favorite thing is when people do jokes like that uh <laughs> it's just like oof. Anyway. <laughs> um so we were around the back is the best way to describe it. Normally, that's what, that's what mm, 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 oh God, mm. <laughs> it's going to be a while. Um, but there's the section of the lake that is closest to the freeway that um, you'll see more turtles, you'll see more ducks, and it isn't, there's less lawn, so there's less people Mm -hmm. um there might be people walking around but there's less people just like the trail goes by but there isn't a lot of space to spread out and have a picnic and do all the stuff you can do on the other side yes and it was still early enough and i i i did a quick scan and i was like i think i think we can do this Mm -hmm. i think smudgy and i could go look at the ducks at echo park lake in fact that is what we will do and so we walked over there without a hitch and um 
we stood at the edge of the lake looking out over it and I was so proud of myself and then I heard splash smudgy had just dove in Mm -hmm. and um it was so it happened in a flash it was did did he have a life jacket on or not (laughs) he didn't at the moment he Mm -hmm. didn't um I was still holding onto his leash Mm -hmm. and whatever i'll just say it. it 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 feels like i might have done the wrong thing but i just like yanked him up but because also where we were at the lake this is notable there were there are parts of the lake where you're at when you stand you're at like the surface you're at the same level as the lake where we were it it, it was a several feet big drop off drop into mm-hmm. the lake and um, this dummy just jumped right in. Anyway, so I just, I was still holding on to the end of the leash. So I just kind of yanked him up by his neck, which like it could have been bad, but I didn't know what else to do. Um, and <laughs> we got out of there and I like looked around and, and no one, like everyone was kind of like, uh, like it must happen all the time. Um, Excuse me. I saw what you just did to your dog. <laughs> What is your problem? <laughs> and then we left and I, I mean, <laughs> he looked like the definition of a pathetic dog. <laughs> like, cause he was soaked. He went in mm. all the way. His right. head was like everything. And again, it was already cold and now he was wet. So he was just like, so we, we booked it home, but um, I had this weird mix. And I guess that is being a dog mom of of being like so scared and so stressed out but also laughing my ass off Mm -hmm. at like you idiot and you look so dumb right now and you're so wet and you're so sad and you smell like a swamp like we have a little swamp pumpy um so yeah that was my exciting oh you were at the echo park swamp (laughs) yeah Mm -hmm. well yeah in his defense there there was a lot of aquatic plants on the surface. So I could see how he would think that that His was perception a solid, was that this yeah. was solid ground. Yeah. yeah. Little I don't did know. he know there was a, an undertoad. But I hope he's okay. It's been a while. So he seems fine now. But it's just like, well, it was also wild to do it by myself. <laughs> I just right. was like, Jeff, wake up, Jeff, wake up. Something crazy just happened. <laughs> I pulled him up by his neck. <laughs> uh, we put on this, I put on the space heater, some blankets around the floor and just, um, but he was mostly dry by the, by the time we got home. Cause well, let me ask about you a this. Mile away. this is, this is because this is what I always think of when I see a dog go into the water is and you said he's short haired. I know that because I've met him, but I felt mm-hmm. it was worth reiterating because Thank you. what I'm about to say. Uh, I feel like whenever you see a dog go in the water, they come out of the water and then he they was- do this crazy thing with their body where they just are like, You should be wet too. <laughs> he did that the entire walk home. Okay. Like, I and it's not, I don't think it's about I should be wet too. I think he's trying to dry off or mm-hmm. trying to get water out of his ears or right. whatever. Right. But yeah, he did that like every three steps, the poor guy. Get water out of his ears. Just see him like, oof, I'll, oof. I'll, I'll send you some pics. They're, they're pretty good <laughs> of like how pathetic he looks. <laughs> um, all right. Well, here's my, here's my parting shot is. Okay. Two things. First thing is it always cracks me up. I mean, you've known me for a long time. I would say one aspect of what I think is funny sometimes is very, very dry Mm -hmm. to other people to the point where it's almost imperceptible that it's supposed to be funny, which causes communication problems Mm. when people don't know you well enough or don't understand that type of humor. I would say um, that is very true. And I would say it's only heightened in an email or a text message. It's taken me 13 years to be like, 
he's not actually mad at you. <laughs> <laughs> like this is his weird sense of humor. <laughs> right. right. But I, I get it now. But, yes, but yes. you like the tone, it's hard to read tone in right. written. You see what I'm saying? I do. Uh and it just <laughs> It's not good, but it does also make me laugh when it goes awry sometimes. Mm -hmm. So one of these things that I've been working on lately, I'm working with a couple of guys who are great and, but we just don't know each other in real life. You know, we oh, just know weird. each other through this. Well, no, I mean, they've been here, they've come over, but I guess, but I, I guess I'm saying we've only ever worked on this one thing together as opposed right. to gone out for drinks or, you know, gone to play basketball or had a circle jerk, whatever the things our guys do together. Like the to, Beatles. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I have not seen that part of the documentary yet. Um, in the documentary. Can you imagine? <laughs> they're, they're having a circle jerk. Wow, meanwhile, in real time. Meanwhile, <laughs> meanwhile, John is in the back going, mm, mm. <laughs> Eggman, Eggman, I am the Eggman. I am the wolf. Coo -coo -coo -coo. And everybody's like, it was amazing when they were jerking off and they wrote <laughs> they wrote that song in like two minutes. I couldn't believe it. The Beatles are so talented. <laughs> uh but anyway, so I was talking to these guys the other night, and they had just, or one of them had just finished watching season three of Succession. So, you know, we were having a whole conversation about it and, you know, and I brought up that article from the New Yorker, which I still haven't read, unfortunately, but my understanding is there's a moment in the article where, and I think you might've been the one who told me this. I don't remember where Macaulay Culkin Jr. Says the thing about, you know, <laughs> that is so disrespectful. Like, <laughs> Kieran. <laughs> uh, he's talking to uh, Jeremy Strong and Jeremy Strong says, oh, yeah. I'm worried uh, people are going to think this is a comedy. And he's like, it is a comedy. And one of the other guys I was talking to said, and I, oh, and I said, of course, it's fucking hilarious. It is so funny. Like, it's definitely a comedy. And he's like, oh, I don't see it as a comedy at all. I think it's really, really upsetting. And I said, <laughs> I said uh, something, something to the effect of, well, the thing is, these are the people I grew up around and I grew up with and I was part of that circle. So I kind of get the jokes maybe more than you do. <laughs> thinking thinking that would be funny. And they were both just kind of like, oh. oh. <laughs> <laughs> it was so, I was like, oh, I guess these guys think I'm a billionaire. Well, like, I guess if you don't know someone's background it yeah. is tough to be like <laughs> you like you just have to to accept what you're told Ugh, it was so weird i was like mm, i guess and and I, and I didn't feel like i wanted to go like i'm just kidding you guys so as far as i know they still think that's the truth that i basically grew up <laughs> in a incredibly wealthy family i love that i have um and again, I may have told this story on the podcast already, but I have like. We may have talked about this before. Welcome to I, We May Have Talked About This Before, folks. I have an inverse of that <laughs> where I thought something was a joke and it wasn't. That happens too. Um, I was at the Silver Lake. This was, I mean. This didn't 10, happen. This, this, is, not, this, is, not your, yeah, this is not your parting well, shot. It's just yeah, like, yeah. this is a memory. This is like, uh, you know, memory triggered by something yeah. I said. Yeah. And I was at the Silver Lake Lounge Bruce. and Bar Barbara, who now goes by Babs Gray, was there. Mm -hmm. And she like she's like the she's the queen of Silver Lake Lounge. And she was talking to two people that looked Which a arguably little... is, you know, not a not a high no, level sad. of royalty. It's a sad thing. Yeah. <laughs> it's a bad, bad thing. <laughs> um, and she was talking to two people at the bar who were like older than us, but not markedly not bar so. flies yeah they weren't mickey rourke and, and she's like hey, oh, bar fly. <laughs> she's like hey amber these are my parents and i was like okay like, I, <laughs> I fully 
and she's like they are my parents and i was like <laughs> oh g- uh, good like i like would not believe. what's her middle name <laughs> yeah. diane yeah was, yeah that is true it, it was uh, oh it was her parents yeah. <laughs> but like for whatever reason i was just like i'm not gonna be the sucker <laughs> <laughs> Your friend Amber really has a bizarre sense of humor. <laughs> I don't get what's going on with her. Uh, that's funny. Uh, well, so here's my other here's my other parting shot. I left here last week. I left here, meaning I didn't leave here, but I left this uh-huh. virtual space with a sense of deep dread. No, because. I had a problem that I wanted to solve, but I was afraid to try to solve it. Let me see if I can explain. I have, well, as you know, I grew up among billionaires. So I have a, I have a trash compactor in my kitchen. And it's also funny, sorry, that they've been to your apartment and that they, <laughs> right. they, they like no offense to your apartment, but yeah. it is not um, I guess I guess Kendall billionaires Roy. Yeah, yeah, I guess billionaires keep uh sketches about cardboard laptops on their refrigerators. Um but I so at some point a couple of weeks ago I opened the trash compactor and I realized, I don't know if I'm going to be able to explain this correctly. This is, this is my theme for the episode is I'm not able to articulate myself properly, but there's a filter. There's an air filter that goes at the front, the top of the front of the thing. It's like a, it's about this big. And then there's a piece that goes over it that clips in and holds the air filter in. And the air filter is a thing that you replace you know you're supposed to replace it i think every two months i usually replace it about once every 14 years and at some point i became aware this was when the garbage was about three quarters full which means a lot of garbage because it's a big thing and it you know you know what a compactor does it it compacts well i was gonna ask Mm-hmm. And I mean, it sounds like I'm being funny, but I'm not. So what you do is you put it in there, it squishes all of your trash, and then you take it, like, then it has to be pretty heavy when you take out the trash. <laughs> right? You're joking, right? You're joking. This question is a joke. Oh, no, it's not a joke. Because okay. it's like, makes it like a brick. No? Uh, okay. Yeah, it's very heavy when I take it out. Yes, it okay. it. it, it it's a lot of garbage that ends up in there because, and that's why there's the air filter because it It tends to stay in there for a while. It doesn't stink, but that's thanks to the air filter. Mm. But I noticed that the filter itself was hanging off the front of the machine. You are almost compacting it. Which means, well, it's above the, it's above the garbage, (laughs) but what it means is that the cover that holds the filter in wasn't there anymore, Mm. which means it had fallen into the garbage at Mm. some unknown Mm. time Mm. 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 and was gone and had been compressed, compacted compacted repeatedly over the course of almost a week. And I was like, I have to get that thing. Like I can't not have the, the thing there. So, you know, obviously we know what that means. It means dumping out the garbage and mm. going through it. Where'd well, you do it? Here's, here's the thing. At first I was like, I'll have to like take out the garbage and just, it's going to take a long time depending on how far down it is. But then I was like, this happens all the time at like, crime scene or whatever like a murder like a murder happens <laughs> crime like, scenes they, they always do this they're like donnie go look in the go garbage and the see trash. if there's clues yeah. yeah see if there's clues in the garbage and they're not gonna sit there and like well it's not this gum wrapper it's not this banana peel it's not these coffee grounds it's not they're not gonna do that so what would they do they would dump it all out right 
But I was like, I don't want to but dump where you, yeah, where would you a do week's that? worth of garbage on my kitchen floor. So this is this is now a day has gone by that I'm debating this in my head. Still putting garbage in the garbage. No, 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 sorry. I, I started a new I started a new garbage. Cover? What's that? Can you just buy a new filter? Probably, cover? probably. But you know how that goes. In my life, that would be six years before I got around <laughs> to doing that. And I definitely debated that. But then I was also like, why would I do that? I just have to get the thing out of the fucking garbage. Like, but what if it's compacted and no longer then I would learn viable? That. That well, let's let's not okay, get ahead I'm sorry. of it. I'm so sorry, but I'm really smart. No, no, no. And I, no, and I, I think <laughs> yeah. This is, I'm so sorry, but I no, 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 really no. Easily. It's not. There's. It's not. A, believe me, it's not a problem. <laughs> I think anticipating things like this. I mean, you know, this is going to be the next thing we do. Is we're going to start our own private detective agency. My dream, but because, nothing scary or gross. No, no, no. It would just be like. <laughs> I can't find the cover of my garbage yeah. compactor, like yeah, cases yeah, yeah. like that. A little too gross, but <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> I can't find the cover of my pool filter. Great. Uh, <laughs> so finally I was like, so I started in another garbage and I was putting the garbage in a different garbage, but not putting anything in the garbage compactor. <laughs> garbage is like every <laughs> noun i was putting noun. the garbage in a different garbage but the garbage compactor didn't have garbage more garbage it already had garbage in it but not more garbage, <laughs> the garbage that was supposed to go in the garbage compactor was going in the other garbage sure so it's like where could i and then it hit me because i grew up among billionaires this is a thing that came up from you last week Oh, no. I have a rich, very wealthy person's tub. Oh. And I was like, I could dump all the garbage oh. in the tub, oh. find the thing, scoop the garbage out. Put it right back put in. in a, put it in a bag, get rid of it, take a bath. And during the course of taking a bath, the garbage would be washed off the sides. of. No, I was like, I can just clean the tub after that, yeah. you know? But the problem is the prospect of that was disgusting and terrifying to me. So instead of doing it, I kept not doing it. Like and picturing it. For several days. Like I was like, I know I have to do this. I don't want to do this, but I have to do it. I don't, you know, I can't pay the rent. You must pay the rent. I can't pay the rent. Mm, Finally, I was like, I'll pay the rent. Yeah. (laughs) Yeah. (laughs) Um, So when I was leaving here, here, this virtual space Mm -hmm. last Thursday, I had already resolved that it was like, I needed to like. So you were having this battle while you were talking. No, 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 no. It was before that. And I had, I was like. I'm in your head. Yes. Yes. For days, I was like, I know I have to do this. I don't want to. It's going to be so fucking like, think about the stuff you put in your garbage. Now think about doing that for eight days straight and stuff is decomposing. And it's, and I was like, it's going to be so fucking gross. Um, And by the way, I should say, I do go around the neighborhood and gather dead animal carcasses and put them in my garbage. So on top of everything else, there's anyway, I was like, this is going to be so gross. I don't want to do this. I have to, I don't want to. So I was like, I'm going to ramp up to it by doing the podcast. And then as soon as the podcast is over, I'll just stand up, go over, take the garbage out, put it in the, um, in the tub. I'll get the thing, you know? So I was like ready to go, but still dreading doing it. So the podcast ends, I get up, I open the garbage, the, the trash compactor. I pull out this giant bag of garbage that I know the fucking thing is in there. I pull it out and underneath the bag is the cover of the thing. Oh my God. So it fell in while I was putting the bag in and was best possible scenario, (laughs) but it was like days of anticipation. Yeah. So congrats lesson learned. Just do the thing. Yes. No, I will. I just wanted to make sure everybody saw (laughs) that it's, it's, uh, it's beautiful. It's a beautiful piece of machinery. It's really, really great. Uh, But anyway, (laughs) you know, 
I feel like I took a lesson away from that, which was like, do the hard thing and it won't ever be as bad as you think it's going to be. Yeah. Or it might, had it been in there, it would have been awful, Mm -hmm. but you know, uh, so that's my, that's my parting shot. I grew up amongst billionaires and I have a trash compactor. (laughs) Honestly, those two are related because I don't know if I've ever had a trash compactor my whole life. It is. I do like having it. The problem is, and I don't know how to solve this problem. I've tried a variety of ways. I also have recycling Mm. and people come over and they don't realize that the recycling is not the garbage. So they invariably put their garbage in the recycling. And then I have to go in the recycling and take the garbage out of the recycling Uh. and put it in the trash because the trash compactor is under the kitchen counter. You have to actually step on a little pedal that opens it so you can put stuff in. So, you know, when I had my last roommate here, she put a sign up that said, this is recycling. Do not put garbage in here. Didn't matter. People didn't see it. They just still put their garbage in there all the time. Um, it hasn't been a problem for two years. Because, right. I was going to say, I, I can't imagine it being. But I used big... to have, I used to have lots of people over on a regular basis. So, and someday, you know, someday I'll, <sighs> who knows what will happen someday. We don't know the future. We can't tell. Uh, all right, folks, that is our show. It is called The Long Shot. Uh, follow us on Twitter at Long Shot Podcast. Uh, like us on Facebook. Uh, check in with us on Foursquare. We don't want to have four. Try to get in our, try to get in our top eight on MySpace. Um, Leave a reading and review on Apple Podcasts. Uh, iTunes. Was it called Apple Podcasts or iTunes? I think it's called Apple Podcasts now. Okay. I actually looked today uh, because I was looking at another podcast and I was like, let me go check on the Longshot podcast. And I searched Longshot. And it doesn't come up. I would say there were 50 other things that came (laughs) up before. I was like, oh, this is great. This is just great. It eventually came up, but it just took a long, long time. And that's because not enough people have left ratings and reviews. So if you do that, it helps the algorithm. And as we know, all algorithms need lots of help. And are good. Uh, Folks, we'll see you next time on The Long Shot. Bye-bye. A sleeper in the grass The days are ruined It's like a thousand afternoons Just landed in my lap And swore themselves to secrecy But whatever they're keeping Is not worth me seeking